Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, October 2nd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Zoners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. As for a number of years now, October is also Cybersecurity Awareness Month, uh, so today I published a quick diary summarizing sort of some of the awareness items around hurricanes because we just had Helene uh, move through here and there are sort of a number of scams and such that always uh, keep coming up. Something that's a little bit newer is uh, the use of uh, AI generated images in social media posts that claim to be related uh, to uh, the event. These are usually just posted to, first of all, create clout and uh, attract followers uh, to a particular social media account. But of course, once an account like this has a certain number of followers, it may be used uh, to spread scams. Other than that, I think uh, anybody listening to this is probably familiar with the other scams I list. And of course, you can find a link in the show notes uh, with the full article. And last week, Simpra released a patch for a remote code execution vulnerability in the post journal service that is part of the Simpra suite, but not enabled by default. Usually when we're talking about Simpra, the webmail system, we're talking about weaknesses and vulnerabilities in the web part of the application. This one is actually in the email part. So an exploit would likely arrive via port 25. Now the post journal service is listening on port 10,027. And the SMTP server would pass messages uh, to it. Uh, we now also have an exploit for uh, this particular vulnerability, which even if the post journal uh, service is not tied into the SMTP service, which is default configuration, could still be exploited if an attacker can reach the server directly on port 10,027 and feed the malicious email straight to post journal. The vulnerability is in the receipt to header in the SMTP header that then includes uh, the code to be executed. And yes, uh, exploit is available for this. So definitely something you want to patch if you are running Simpra. And from time to time, you had to talk about malicious browser extensions. Microsoft is trying to help that now a little bit by improving the publish API being used for Microsoft Edge extensions. Now, the extensions themselves can still be pretty much published as before, but the authentication system in order to connect to the published API, that's going to change on an opt-in basis. So developers for now are able to opt into the new experience, but are also still able if they want to, to stay with the old way of doing things. Probably the most visible difference here is that API API keys or the secrets you're creating uh, to actually connect and authenticate are created randomly by Microsoft when you sign up. And also these credentials will only be valid for 72 days, at which point you need to regenerate them. In the old system, the credentials expired only after two years and the user was able to select credentials. So this pretty much is supposed to limit the chances of credentials getting compromised. But of course, a key rotation like this is always a little bit tricky in CI/CD pay pipelines in particular. If you can't automate it, it's not really clear if that key rotation or API key rotation is uh, automatable here in some ways. And the binary research team released details regarding a vulnerability found in the uh, baseboard management controller in Supermicro motherboards. This was actually discovered by them back in July. So thanks for them to holding off a little bit here until they reveal details. Well, it's kind of an embarrassing flaw in that it's a simple stack based buffer overflow in the login form of all places. So authentication is not required in order to exploit this vulnerability. Securing 
access to these baseboard management controllers is always critical. They also have some good links at the end of the article with uh, hints about how to better protect these baseboard management controllers because uh, they have a pretty rich history of uh, pretty easy to exploit vulnerabilities. There's also a list of affected motherboards, uh, but just to make sure, uh, check your systems uh, regularly and make sure that any firmware like this is regularly updated. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and thanks to whoever recommended this podcast on a Reddit post, saw this earlier. So uh, thanks, more listeners are always welcome and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.